In this video, we're going to take a look at some torque problems, but in a slightly different way. So, our problem says a student is trying to determine how much weight can be placed at the 100 centimeter mark on the seesaw without tipping over the seesaw. This is really four problems in one. So we're trying to see what would happen if an 8 newton weight, 10 newton weight, 12 newton weight, and 14 newton weight were placed on this question mark. But instead of treating it like four different problems, we're going to really see how to just do our work one time. So let's start off by drawing our forces. So we know that we're going to draw a weight down from the center of each object. So we have box A has a weight. Since this is a rotation problem, I also want to write down radius and torque. We know that we have to consider the weight of the seesaw itself. We always draw the weight down from the center of the object. So weight, radius, and torque. And we know that some weight is going to be placed at the 100 centimeter mark. And so I'm going to draw right here and write weight, radius, and torque. All right, this problem says to answer all questions relative to the rotation point. So I know that if this seesaw t starts to tip over, it would end up looking something like this, if I put too much weight where that question mark is, that means this is my rotation point right here, right on the right fulcrum. Let me get rid of that. All right, so let's go ahead and start listing our given. It says block A is 4 newtons. It says the seesaw is 8 newtons. So I can write those down as the weights for A and the seesaw itself. All right, then for the radius, I'll count from the 70 centimeter mark, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 centimeters. Multiplying those, I get a torque of caused by A of 240 Newton centimeters. And I can fill that in as my first answer. Then the seesaw, Measuring that radius, the center of the seesaw is 20 centimeters away from the fulcrum. And that gives me a torque of 160 newton centimeters. Remember that if that fulcrum was at the 50 mark, then that radius and torque would be zero. All right, so I can write down 160 newton centimeters for the torque caused by the seesaw's weight. All right, my next question says, how much weight placed at the 100 centimeter mark would barely balance the seesaw? So instead of looking at this as four different problems right here, I'm going to think, okay, what's the critical weight that I could put right here where it's just going to start to tip and all of that normal force would be transferred to this right fulcrum? So if my seesaw is barely balanced, I know that I need the same amount of torque on both sides. So on the left side, I have 240 plus 160. That gives me 400 newton centimeters. And my critical torque on the left side would then also be 400 newton centimeters. I don't know the weight right now, but I can count the radius. So from the 70 mark to the 100 mark, that is a radius of 30 centimeters. Then rearranging my torque formula, I know that the weight or any force would equal the torque divided by the radius. And so 400 divided by 30 gives me 13.3 newtons. All right, so 13.3 newtons, if 13.3 newtons were placed right there, then that seesaw would kind of wobble. It would lose contact right here with that zero, and all the normal force would be on this right fulcrum. So that's kind of the critical amount of weight we can put on the right side. So let me draw a line 
between 12 and 14 because I know that 13.3 newtons is between 12 and 14. That means anything less than 13.3 won't be enough to tip over the seesaw. So my answers would be no for 8, 10, and 12. And my answer for 14 would be yes. All right, let's take a look at a similar problem, but this one involves a crane. All right, so in this problem, an engineer is trying to determine how much counterweight she needs to use in order to lift a 21 kip load at the position shown. Assume her crane has a 10 kip chassis, but all other parts of the crane besides the counterweight have negligible weight. So again, these uh, substantial parts of the crane are shown in um, dark green, and I'm going to draw a weight down at the center of each one. So here's my load. I'll write weight, radius, and torque. Then at the center of the chassis, make sure you draw it from the very center of each object, weight, radius, and torque. And then from the center of the counterweight, weight, radius, and torque. All right, I know the load is 21 kips. The chassis is 10 kips. Be careful in one of the problems, I give you the counterweight and the chassis and you have to figure out the load. So just be careful with what is given. All right, then I know if this crane starts to tip over, if the load was too heavy, it would be this outrigger, part of the crane that touches the ground is called the outrigger. It would be this outrigger that would stay on the ground and this outrigger would start to come up if the crane started to tip over, which we definitely don't want to happen. All right, so next part is to count my radiuses. Remember that I'm count my radius perpendicular to the force. So my first radius, I'll highlight it here, is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 feet. Multiplying 21 times 35, I get 735 kip feet. So I'll fill that in as my first answer, 735 kip feet. The torque caused by the chassis. Well, let's count the radius for the chassis. Would be 5, 10. Again, we're counting horizontally because these are vertical forces and it's a cross product. So that is 10 feet times 10 kips gives us 100 kip feet. So I could plug in all three or all four of these counterweights and see which ones worked, but the more efficient way to do that is to figure out, okay, how much counterweight would I need so that the torque on both sides of this outrigger will be equal, and that'll be my critical counterweight. All right, so I know the torque on both sides must be equal, so I have 735, that's the only torque on the left side. On the right side, I know that these two must combine to be 735 kip feet, because I'm trying to balance the crane to find my critical counterweight. So that means that this torque must be 735 minus 100 or 635 kip feet. If I count my radius here, 5, 10, 15 feet to the center of the counterweight. And then to get my weight, I can do the torque divided by the radius again. So 635 divided by 15 gives me 42.3 kips as my counterweight. All right, that 42.3 kips is right here. So now be careful. I know everything on one side of this line is going to be yes, everything on the other side is going to be zero, but let's think about this one. Because it really matters, it, does this problem ask about the load, like one problem, or is this problem asking about the counterweight? This problem's asking about the counterweight. For this crane not to tip over, I need more torque on the right side. If I have too much torque on the load, then the crane will tip. But 
to be able to lift this safely, I need more torque over here. So it's the larger counterweights are safer. So in this problem, my answer is going to be yes for the larger counterweight. It's anything larger than 42.3 kips, which by the way was my answer right here. And again, that was, was asking about counterweights so my units there are just kips. Anything larger is going to be safe. So I'm going to say yes for 50 and 60. And for 30 and 40, I'm going to say no.